the first chapter in the A2 syllabus is the chapter, uh, the topic is respiration. Uh, and often we talk about respiration as uh, something to do with energy and of course we talk about the mitochondria which is the place where aerobic respiration takes place. Now, uh, we're going to talk of two things. Number one is the energy store. And energy store means anything which can sort of uh, have large pockets of energy present in it. So one is starch, two is glycogen, and third is fat. Starch is mostly in plants. Glycogen is mostly in animals and bacteria. And fat is, of course, present in both. We find fats in uh, seeds, we find fats in the, under the skin. Uh, the energy currency, just like we have currency in the world, we have different countries having different currencies. Uh, if we go to Dubai, we have the dirham. If we go to uh, UK, we have the pound. So, but in all living organisms, the energy currency in all living organisms. And when I say living organisms, I mean anything, animals, plants, bacteria, yeast, fungus. So ATP is the universal energy currency. We say it is the universal energy currency. Why? Because it is present in every living organism. Now if you look at the structure of ATP, what does it have? It has a ribose sugar. Now a ribose sugar is a pentose, but it won't be acceptable to me because there are many other pentoses as well which we study in biology. And then we have an organic base, which is adenine. So the organic base is adenine, which is a purine, back to the AS level. So it's a purine and then we have three phosphates attached to it. So we have three phosphates attached to it. Now this ATP is hydrolyzed. This ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP plus inorganic phosphate. Now this would be hydrolysis. And of course, the opposite would be condensation. So the structure of ATP, you have to under remember, it's a phosphorylated nucleotide. And that is why it is called adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate. And this is broken down into adenosine diphosphate. And of course, it can be even broken down to adenosine monophosphate. And this results in this energy-rich bond being broken up and energy being released. We always say energy is released. Please remember, energy cannot be produced. The law of thermodynamics, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Then what we have to understand is the need for energy in living organisms. Why do we need energy? Just like why would you why would you need electricity at home? Well, you need electricity at home to run the air conditioner, to charge your mobile phone, uh, to charge your laptops. Uh, electricity, the fridge runs on electricity. So why do we need energy in living organisms? Now, there is a four point uh, So basically it is for movement and movement means muscle contraction like we talk of a uh, person walking. Then we have uh, active transport and active transport occurs in all the living organisms, it occurs in the kidneys. If we talk of plants it occurs in the root hair cell. 
Now, the next M is maintenance of body temperature. So, whatever temperature this room is in, whether it's hotter or colder, it doesn't matter. But your body temperature will always be at 37. Now, how is that possible? That's possible because there is some sort of uh, an energy releasing process taking place. Just like if I ask you that, I mean, I'm giving you a beaker of water and there's water in this beaker and I tell you to maintain this at 37 degrees Celsius. Well, you naturally ask me for some sort of a heater or some sort of a Bunsen burner or something to keep it at 37. So how is it that your body temperature at all times is at 37? The reason is that there is some sort of a process, some chula, which is of course the respiration taking place inside the mitochondria which is releasing that energy and your body is maintained at 37 degrees Celsius. So just like I asked you to maintain a beaker uh, with water in it at 37 degrees Celsius, you would need some sort of a Bunsen burner under it. So similarly, your body has to be maintained at 37 at all times. Whatever the room temperature is the same material. The room could be hotter, the room could be colder. And the third and the most important is anabolic reaction. Now, anabolic reactions are those which are monomer to polymer. So, the example that I give you is DNA. How is DNA made? It is made by joining nucleotides. Similarly, proteins are made up of amino acids. So, amino acids are joined together to make proteins. Then we have uh, glycogen, that's in the liver cells. So glycogen, glucose joined together to make glycogen. So and the arrows of course just depict that you know this is the monomer and that is the one. Then the third one is starch. When a plant photosynthesizes, glucose is made. Now the glucose is joined together to make starch. So anabolic reactions, anabolic reactions are those, so all these, so we come at the four that we talk about, number one movement, active transport, maintenance of body temperature and on anabolic reactions. This is the first part of the chapter which uh, was part of the respiration one and two. So I want everybody going through this. And then we'll discuss this tomorrow.